Hello again, this is Carol and I'm here today to take you through the phase we've all been waiting for. Phase 3. What everybody, really everybody should know. Phase 3 is the last phase before an approval of medication following phases 1 and 2. Approximately 25 to 30 percent of phase 2 trials go to phase 3. Phase 3 studies are conducted to confirm the results of the first two phases, but in a much bigger study population. Also studies with already approved medicinal products for an indication that was not yet approved or with known active ingredients in a new dosage form are also completely new combinations. A typical phase 3 study can enroll more than 300 to up to 10,000 patients. And this number can be a lot higher based on the endpoint of the clinical trial. For example, there are up to 40,000 patients in the COVID vaccine study to find out how effective these vaccines are in protecting the patients against COVID-19. Because the study population is a lot larger, the studies are usually conducted across several countries in parallel to avoid recruitment delays. The time frame of a typical phase 3 study can be months up to 4 years. Typically, the patient population in a phase 3 study is quite diverse and differ from each other a bit more than our phase 2 patients population, as they should represent the society. We exclude a lot of patients who are part of the typical society, such as pregnant women, unless the drug is intended for use in pregnancy. The objective of the phase 3 studies is to confirm preliminary evidence gathered from the various phases demonstrating efficacy, safety, evaluating side effects, interactions with other medications, possible contraindications, therapeutic advantage compared to the other products, health economic parameters and the quality of life. Think of large multi-center trials all running in parallel across multiple countries and continents. Depending on availability for the corresponding indication, comparative preparations are either already approved drugs or placebos, or sometimes a comparable effect can be sufficient, that is non-placebo, when compared with the usual standard therapy. Usually, phase 3 studies are randomized or double-blind studies, meaning the patient does not know whether they are receiving the experimental treatment or a placebo, so as to eliminate any sort of bias when interpreting the results. This is a vital phase of drug development as results from this phase are submitted to regulatory authorities for approval for the drug release into the open market. To get an approval, the risk-benefit assessment is one of the most important criteria, meaning results should demonstrate a safety and efficacy considering the most frequent adverse events, drug interactions and all side effects across all the patient populations. Let's take vaccine development for example. Vaccine trials are typically designed to evaluate safety and efficacy. The efficacy in this case can be defined as percentage reduction in incidence of disease or infection among the vaccinated. One may ask, what's the average out-of-pocket cash outflow for a phase 3 trial? An estimated 86.3 million US dollars easily goes into a phase 3 trial. I hope you liked our video on phase 3 trials and it gave you a much bigger picture on what's really meant by phase 3 since we had it so many times lately in the hunt for a new vaccine. Next time, we'll tell you about what happens once a drug goes through an approval phase. Until next time, goodbye!